So welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do an independent between participants or between subjects and over a one-way version on SPSS version 29. So we're going to use a one-way between participants and over when we have one independent variable that is comprised of three or more levels and when we have a continuous dependent variable. Also in this video, we'll take a look at how to test the assumptions of this test, how to report those, and obviously we'll take a look at how to report the results of the ANOVA itself. So in this example, we're gonna imagine that we're interested in three different tri types of treatment. So I have the treatment in this column here, and then I've got one, two, three in this column, representing three different types of treatment. And then we're going to imagine that we're interested in the effect that those treatments have on the severity of some type of symptom. So we have symptom severity scores in this column here. So let's go to SPSS and take a look at how we can enter these data. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom and click this variable view tab. And then we're going to enter the name of the independent variable into the top row within this name column. So let's just call that treatments. And then I'll use the cell below to tell SPSS what the name is of the dependent variable. So let's call that symptom underscore severity. I have to use an underscore because SPSS doesn't allow spaces. So those are the names of our variables. We can use this measures column to specify that the independent variable is nominal, which is another name for categorical, and that the symptom severity variable is a scale variable, which is another name for a continuous variable. Finally, we can use this values column. Um, if we click on the cell that corresponds to the, the independent variable, we can get this, this um, gray box appears. So if we click on that, that opens this window and then we can tell SPSS what the different levels are of our independent variable. So we'll click on this plus button, we'll enter a one, and then we can give um, one of our levels a name, so we'll call that treatment one, or we'll click plus, we'll do two, and then just the same thing again, so treatment two, and plus again, three, treatment three, and then just go to OK when it looks something like that. Then we can go to the bottom of the screen again and we can click Data View this time. And we can see that the names of our variables have appeared above the first two columns here. And now we can just uh, copy and paste the data from the Excel file into SPSS. So we're just going to select all of the data and then press Command or Control C and then Control V or, com or Command V to paste the data into SPSS. So I've just selected the top cell in the column on the left, and that's paste the data in. We can see that we actually have words in this column. So it says treatment one, treatment two, treatment three. Whereas in the Excel file, we just had numbers one, two, and three. And that's because we've already told SPSS that number one equals treatment one, number two equals treatment two, etc. And because in this view menu, we have value label selected. If we unselect that, we just see the numbers. Okay, so one of the assumptions of this test is that the data are normally distributed in each condition within the, or each level within the independent variable. And the other condition is known as homogeneity or variance, which basically just means that the data are spread out to an to a similar extent in each one of those three uh, conditions or levels. So we can actually check the homogeneity or variance assumption when we run the ANOVA itself, but we can check the normality assumption before running the test. So let's do that now. So what I'm gonna do is go up to Analyze and then down to Descriptive Statistics, then across to Explore. And then we have uh, this Explore window open and we can transfer our independent variable to the factor list and our dependent variable to the dependent list. Then we can click on plots. I am going to unselect stem and leaf 
but I will select histogram and I will select normality plots with tests and then go to continue and then to OK. And I'm just going to scroll down a bit to this tests of normality table and you can see that this is divided into two sections. So we have this one test here on the left of the table and we have the Shapiro Wilk test here on the right side of the table. Typically, uh, this test on the right is used when you have fewer than 50 participants and this one on the left is used when you have more than 50 participants. In this case, we have 10 participants in each one of the three treatment conditions. Uh, so we have 30 participants in total. So we're going to focus on the Shapiro Wilk side of the table. And what we want to see is that we have values above 0 0.05 in each of these rows within the SIG column. So we have 0 0.691, 0 0.287, 0 0.258. So in every case, we have a value above 0 0.05 which indicates that the data are normally distributed in each level of our independent variable. Um, if we look at the histograms, um, these aren't great because we don't have much data, but they generally indicate that the, the data are normally distributed because we have a sort of symmetrical distribution of the data. But let's focus on what these results say, as this is a more objective way of assessing the normality of the data. If you find that your data are not normally distributed, you might consider doing a non-parametric version of the one way between participants and over, such as a cross gal wallace test. I have a video about that, so if you think you need to do that test instead, check out that video and you'll find out how to do it. So once we've checked our normality assumption, we can actually run the test itself. So let's go up to analyze, and then we will go down to general linear model, then across to univariate. And then we can transfer our independent variable to the fixed factors box and our dependent variable to the dependent variable box. We can also click on options and check a few things in here. So we can select descriptive statistics, uh, estimates of effect size and homogeneity tests. So that's the, this test here is going to check the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So one of the assumptions of the test. Then we can click continue. Uh, we can also select post hoc if you'd like to do post hoc tests. Um, we can do that. So we can transfer the independent variable to this post hoc tests for uh, window or space. And then you can, there's a bunch of different options. A common option is this Bonferroni test. So I'm just going to check that bond for any option and then click continue. You could also create a graph at this stage. So you could uh, click on this plots option and let me see. So you can do treatment, horizontal axis, add, and then you can choose either a line graph or a bar charts. Um, let's go for a bar charts and we can click include error bars in this bit here. Um, and you can choose whether you want the error bars to show 95% confidence intervals or standard error. So I'm going to stick with the 95% confidence intervals. So I'll click continue and then we can click OK to run the test. So one of the first things we can check out is this Levine's test of equality of error variances table. So this is the test that checks the homogeneity of variances assumption. So let's focus on this based on mean row. And if we look at the SIG value, we want to see that this is non-significant. So we want to see that it's above 0 0.05. So in this case, it's clearly above 0 0.05, which indicates that the assumption of homogeneity of variances has been met. Um, so once we've checked that, uh, let's head on down to the tests of between subjects effects table. And let's find our independent variable rho. So we can, we can see treatment here. And then if we scroll on over to the SIG column, we can see that we have a value below 0 0.05, which indicates that we have a significant effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable. Something else we might want to take a look at is the descriptive statistics. So we can see we've got means for each of the three treatments. So we've got a, about six here, about three here, and about seven here. So the symptom severity scores are lowest for treatment two. They're a bit higher for treatment one 
and their highest for treatment three. So at the moment, we just know that there's a significant effects of treatments on symptom severity, but we don't actually know whether treatment one is significantly different from treatment two or treatment three, or whether treatment two is significantly different from treatment three. So that's why we run the post hoc tests. So if we scroll down a bit, we get this multiple comparisons table and that provides us with that information. So this first section, uh, this like top third bit of the table corresponds to treatment one. So we can compare treatment one to treatment two. And we can see that we have a, a value here below 0 0.05. So there's a significant difference between treatment one and treatment two. If we compare treatment one and treatment three, Again, we have a value below 0 0.05, so treatment one and two, I mean treatment one and three, differ from each other. And then finally, if we compare treatment two and three, we can see again that we have a value below 0 0.05, indicating that there's a significant difference between treatment two and treatment three. So we have significant differences between all of the combinations. So let's take a look at how we can report those results. So here's an example. We can often just start off by saying um, what we did. So we used a one-way independent samples analysis or variance, otherwise known as an ANOVA. And this was conducted to investigate the impact of treatments on symptom severity. So we've just mentioned the test and we've mentioned which variables were in, those, in that test. And then before actually reporting the results of the test, it's good to report the results of the assumption checks. So here's the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. So I've said Shapiro-Wilk tests indicated that the data were normally distributed in the treatment one, treatment two, and treatment three conditions. And then obviously I've just inserted these statistics as well. But let's just take a quick look at where those statistics come from. So I'm gonna scroll back up towards the top of this output and find this tests of normality table again. And we can see that we have treatment one, two, and three in this table. And let's take a look at treatment one. So I've said W equals 0.95. So that corresponds to treatment one and this value here in the statistic column, just rounded to two decimal places. I've got 10 in parentheses here which corresponds to the value in the degrees of freedom or DF column here. And then I've got P equals 691, which is what we have here, 0.691. And then I've just done the same thing for treatment two and treatment three. So moving on to the Levine's test, which checks the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So I've said Levine's test indicated that the assumption of homogeneity of variance was met. And then I've inserted some statistics. So let's scroll down to where those statistics come from. So we've got this table here again, and we've said F equals 2.24. So that's the value in this top row, um, 0 0.224. So is that a mistake there? Okay. So that should actually be 0 0.22 if we're rounding that to two decimal places. And then we've got the degrees of freedom. So we've got um, two and 27. So those are in parentheses after the F, two comma 27. And we've got the P equals 0 0.801. And that comes from here, 0 0.801. Um, so then we can actually go on to reporting the results of the ANOVA itself. So there was a significant effect of treatments on symptom severity. And that comes from this tests of between subjects effects table. We're looking at this treatment row. We've got the uh, F equals 39.20. So we can see here treatment row, F column 39.20. We've got the degrees of freedom, which are two and 27. So we're getting that from here again. So DF equals two in the treatment row and the 27 is the degrees of freedom value in the error row. So the next thing we have is the p-value. So p equals less than 001. That comes from the SIG column and treatment row. And then we've got this partial eta squared value, which is an effect size statistic. And we've said that that is 0.74. And that's what we have here. It's just been rounded to two decimal places. 
So the, those are the ANOVA results. And then let's take a look at how to re report the Bonferroni post hoc comparisons. So we've said post Bonferroni post hoc comparisons revealed that symptom severity in the treatment one condition was significantly higher than in the treatment two condition, etc. So we've taken these means and standard deviations that appear here. These come from this descriptive statistics table. So I've referred to treatment one here. We can see in this treatment one row, we have 6.10 for the mean and 1.20 for the standard deviation, which is this value here, rounded to two decimal places. And then I've just done the same thing for treatment two and three. Those values reported here come from this table as well. And then I've just reported p-values every time that I make a comparison. So let's just take a look at an example of that. So treatment one to treatment two, that's what we're referring to at the start of the sentence. So we've said, revealed that symptom severity in the treatment one condition was significantly higher than in the treatment two condition. P is less than 0 0.001. And then that's what we have here. So those are essentially all of the results uh, that we can report. We can also take a look at this graph. If you're interested in how to edit this, if we just double click on it, it opens this uh, chart editor. We probably don't want our bars to be bright blue. Um, so if we double click on these bars, we can see that uh, with this properties menu opens, we can then choose a different color. So let's choose gray. Uh, we can also change the size of the bars. So let's go to this bar options tab and we can move this thing left or right to make the bars thinner or fatter. So I've moved it to the left and then I'll click apply. Uh, we can delete anything we don't want. I probably don't want this because it can just, I can write a title within the Word document of my report. So I just click on it and then hit backspace uh, to delete that. Uh, same for this thing. I probably don't want that. I can just explain that in the word file. Um, if you want to change um, the wording of anything, click on it once, then click on it again, and that will allow you to edit it. So let's call this like symptom severity. And we can also just change the size and style of any bit of writing that appears here. So if I, if I click on it, and I've still got this properties uh, window open, I can then just choose a different font. So let's choose the font that I'm using in my report. So Times New Roman, let's choose a different size because this looks quite small at the moment. So I'm, I'm gonna try 16, then I'll click apply. And we can see that that looks a lot easier to read. And then you can just do similar changes for all of the elements within the chart editor. And any changes that you make here will be saved automatically. So just click that red button whenever you're ready and that will close that and your save and your changes are saved automatically in this output file. So that's pretty much it for the one way between participants and over. Let me know if you have any questions and I will try to get back to you. Thank you for watching. See you next time.